the Italian Empire and the lesser evil of Europe and possibly the fourth superpower of the world, dominating the south of Europe and being a major power of the Mediterranean with a vast empire in Arabia and North and East Africa with strong diplomatic ties to the Mediterranean countries such as the Iberian Union and the Hellenic state. And now Italy finds herself in a strange position. One that has the interests of the world having a keen eye at the Mediterranean nation. However, this wasn't always the case. After the First World War, Italy felt cheated by the Western powers, promised lands that they sacrificed many young Italian men for in the Great War, only to get a slice of what they had been told. Unrest grew in the country, seeing the gains that Italy got, to the point that in 1922, the National Fascist Party took charge of the country, becoming the first fascist state. And with that, Italian history changed forever. With the fascists, led by El Duce Benito Mussolini, had four stages of securing power and creating a Greater Italy. The first phase, between 1923 and 1925, the years of normal, with the Italian parliament still being in use, slowly gaining power over the state. The second phase, between 1925 to 1929, years of constructing the fascist dictatorship. The third phase, between 1923 and 1934, just further securing the state. And the final state, between 1935 and 1940, was to push for war and expansion to create a new and greater Italy. No, an Italian empire that would dominate the Mediterranean like their Roman ancestors before them. The first victim of this aggression was Ethiopia, with condemnation from the Western powers as Italy put their boot on the neck of the African nation. No one will stop Italy becoming a great power. It was destined to be, especially the traitors of the West. And when war slowly started to form its clouds over Europe, Italy signed the Pact of Steel, making them an ally with their northern neighbour, the German Reich. And when war finally came, Italy was there with their German ally, achieving victory in North Africa and help shepherd in the victory of the Axis powers, helping Europe fall into darkness. Due to her efforts in defeating the Allies, Italy gained much at the peace conferences, seeing parts of Yugoslavia, Albania and parts of Africa and Arabia come under her governance. With the colony of Libya, a pre-war colony, along with Italian East Africa, which contains Somalia, Ethiopia and Eritrea, but now also governs Tunisia and a large part of Algeria, with the most western part going to, at the time, Spain. Egypt became a protectorate under Italy, with little more freedom, unlike the more direct rule of the other colonies, as well as the Levant going under Italian control, which would lay the seeds for future tension with Turkey. Time will see if those tensions manifest into blood on the sand. The governorate of the Gulf was once a former British protectorate of Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Buran and Kuwait. Now, their rich oil does not lead to London, but to Rome. The Italian colony state is rather stable, with only little resistance in their large empire, especially compared to the other colonial powers, such as the German Reich's commissariats and the Japanese in their East Asian co-prosperity sphere. A lot of this is due to the lack of economic and military power that Italy has, but this has benefited them as governors of these colonies like to discuss and negotiate with their subjects, making the Italians more welcome in governing these lands, unlike their brutal competitors. However, to say the extremists do not lie in wait for a moment of weakness to strike and push out the invaders is foolish. As the war became more into history as time went on, the past relationships started to change, with the Alantropa project soon becoming the Antropa disaster, crippled the Mediterranean countries, promised unlimited power and more land by the Germans. Instead, they had crashed their economies. 
blocking trade from the Atlantic. With important port cities such as Genoa, Venice, Naples, Athens, Istanbul and Barcelona having their economies crash and these nations having to build new ports and docks from scratch and to this day the disaster still affects these countries. Italy, hurt by another supposed to be ally. Benito Mussolini saw this as a betrayal by one of Hitler's mad projects and with the German economic crash hurting the Italian economy's corpse, the Germans also requested Italian aid in the fight against the Russians but this was the final straw on the camel's back and Mussolini refused and no longer wanted the Germans' problems affecting them so Italy left the Axis and looked to set up a new economic and political faction, the Triumphant, in the early 1950s. And with Spain and Turkey joining, along with their puppets, colonies and client states joining to create a strong Mediterranean African faction, one of the staples of the Triumphant is its anti-German policy, as all nations work together in case of any German aggression towards them. Mussolini before his death even welcomed those who the German see as undesirables into his land, even helping Jewish people settle in the Levant. This has created many tension between the Reich and the Empire, especially as some notable terrorists of the Reich hide in Italian lands, setting up underground resistance cells in the hope of freeing their homelands, as well as the triumphant trades with the OFN and the East Asian co-prosperity sphere which has helped the Italian economy recover. As the decades went on, El Ducci's health started to decline massively and irrational and borderline mad decisions were being made by the elderly dictator, even going after the royal family, especially the king, Umberto II, causing great unrest in the country to the point where civil war might have come. However, Mussolini's son-in-law, Galazzo Ciano stepped in, convincing Mussolini to give up on eliminating the royal family, which he agreed to. However, some days later, Mussolini would die, leaving Galeazzo Ciano the new fascist El Duce. Some seeing this as his way of keeping Italy safe and preserving it from falling into more turmoil. By 1962, the nations that are part of the faction are the Italian Empire, the Iberian Union, the Republic of Turkey, with all being co-leaders of the faction, and their puppets in client states, the Hellenic State, the Independent State of Croatia, the Iraqi Republic, Khalid, the Kingdom of Yemen, the Kingdom of Egypt, and with their colonies, governorates, and military administrations being the Italian East Africa, the government of the Levant, the government of the Gulf, an Algerian military command, Algerian military territory. However, as time marches on, the faction has slowly been forming cracks, as the German threat becomes less and less due to internal issues, and with now the new Iberian Union and Republic of Turkey dissatisfied with the status quo, wanting more land and colonies which is held by Italians, with the Turks asking for their rightful land back and the Iberians asking for more than just a desert of West Africa. With the Italians pointing out how they only joined the Axis once victory was in sight and did not contribute in the same way as they had in achieving the gains, putting immense pressure on the Allies, which feels like it will crack at any moment. The Italian military finds itself in a strange place. At the beginning of the war, it was corrupt and lacking behind in technology. With German aid, with mistakes and defeats, the Italian High Command managed to slowly reshape the armed forces into something which could take on the Franco-British forces, securing North Africa and keeping East Africa, with a mix of unconventional tactics and refusal to surrender, as well as knowing the land. And by the year 1962, is the fourth strongest army in the world, only behind the USA, the Reich and the Japanese, being the second strongest in Europe, with the emphasis on the Riga Marina, the navy, with the largest fleet in the Mediterranean, 
dwarfing the Turks and the Iberians' fleets, as well as puts the Germans' Kriegsmarine to shame, something the Italians do like to remind them of. With their fleets also being in the Red Sea or in their colonial holdings, the main land army of Italy isn't up to standards as the navy and is still strong basing some of their unit design off the German army units, with specialised units in the colonies trained for unique terrain action, acting as a fast response if any trouble breaks out in their holdings. The Italian Air Force has always been a priority since the beginning days of fascism, and is a modern and effective air force. However, it is still no match to the Germans' gigantic Luftwaffe, completely dwarfed and sized and would easily be overwhelmed by them. The year is 1962. Italy is at a crossroad, with many different paths open for the country, as the death of Benito Mussolini, the leadership of the nation, has come down to his son-in-law, Gareto Ciano. Unlike his father-in-law, he believes that fascism has achieved all that it can for Italy, uniting all the Italian-speaking people and creating a greater Italy, and with the persecution of political opponents has slowly and unofficially stopped, as well as more political and civil freedoms for all Italians even willing to slow down press censorship as that comes to an end, with some people seeing this as an end of fascism and the beginning a new democratic Italy. However, some see that as a potential threat and might try and stop any chance of abandoning fascism, while others see this as an opportunity to implement their own ideology on the Italian state. With the triumphant members starting to turn on each other, Italy tries its best, but some wonder if the pact is already doomed, especially as Germany turns on herself. With Italian trade and policy has made some neutral and positive relations overseas, especially with the USA and Japan, and seeing Italy as the only one that can stop the Germans' aggression, especially with its territory benefiting the Italians in case of war against the North. Will Italy return to democracy, or will it stick on the path of fascism, or will it become something else? Will the triumphant stay together or break apart? Will Italy manage to hold on to its colonies or lose them? Will Italy be prepared for the demonic phoenix of Germany, who may look south once it has dealt with its internal struggles? and have a change of leadership, even without the triumphant. All of this is up to you. Choose wisely, or doom us all. Oh,